paid a total of £45, which equates to $55 for a faulty Xbox One S on eBay. The eBay listing states is quite a lot. I'm not going to read all of it. Basically, no HDMI signal to the TV. Nice. Let's get into it. Yes or no in the comments if you can make a snake with your hands. Hopefully you can see this on the front. I don't know if it's dirt or there is like a huge mark just across the disk drive. This was included in the photos on eBay. The console itself seems to be in okay condition, except for the fact it's missing the serial number. This gives me suspicions. It has been open before as well because you can see the crack that we have above the sticker. When you remove them, I'm pretty sure the writing shows through the Microsoft and you can see that just there. A little bit worried because if we look at the HDMI port, which is usually the reason for no display, you can see that it looks okay. Let's go with a clap transition today. Lovely. Now, usually you'd be able to see that a hard drive would state one terabyte, in which case this one does here. So we have picked ourselves up a one terabyte Xbox One S. However, they have etch sketched the words one terabyte with a knife or something onto the disk drive. So this isn't a hard drive, this is a disk drive and they've etched one terabyte. Nice, okay. First inspections, it's a very, very clean board, which to some would be amazing and really good. However, for me, it's just a bad luck charm. Cleaner boards pose me bigger problems. We have a black marker here as well on the hard drive. I was just taking it apart a bit further and I was like, hold on. I've not actually tested to see if I don't get an image yet. It could be a faulty hard drive. Let's do exactly that. Okay, we have ourselves one of my most common fixes on an Xbox One S that I've experienced when picking up devices from eBay. This is an issue caused by the retimer chip. Some people call it a redriver. You can see how much the display is glitching. It's flickering on and off and it's just not playable in any way, shape or form. I'm gonna do some basic observations on the board itself to make sure that that is definitely the cause of the issue. However, it's had a 100% success rate so far. Is this the day it doesn't work? Let's get to the bottom of the board. And here we have the board. The real question is, has work been completed around this chip before? It looks pretty factory to be honest, because there's gonna be some other things that we need to test. We'll check all the pins on the HDMI port and make sure they're good. I don't think we'd actually get an image though if any of these pins were damaged. We also have these little filters here, which sit between the HDMI port and the retimer chip. I don't know if I mentioned this is the retirement chip, by the way. I think I glossed over that. And they're meant to have continuity going through them vertically. If they don't, it could be causing a little bit of a mixed signal, which equals the glitching that you saw on the screen, potentially. Let's now get this board under the microscope. I'm gonna try and talk you through this as much as I can. The process that I use to A, remove the chip, and then B, replace it. I'm running low on retimer chips, so I'm gonna be using a retimer chip from another board that I'm gonna extract. This chip is in fact called a TDP159 chip, as you can see from the right end at the top. I'm gonna to start by putting some flux around the chip. I usually go around two sides. This flux does not want to budge today, wow. Okay, that will do. <laughs> this is just to take it off. I'm gonna put my noisy extractor fan on. And we're gonna go with a temperature of 470 degrees Celsius at 99% airflow. And as you can see, we're using quite a big tip. That's to make sure that we cover the whole surface area of the retimer chip. Start by heating up a little bit of the flux and pushing it over. Now I'm moving around the board to heat the board up. Now I'm gonna move into the chip, wait for the solder to wet, and then I'm gonna pull it off. It should be around now. And there it goes. As always, the most important thing is cleaning up. So I'm just gonna take a cotton bud and try and wipe away the flux that's been left on the board whilst it's hot, just so it makes it so much easier to get rid of. I'm doing it gently because recently on a PlayStation 5, I actually pulled off some diodes. I'll leave a link to that video in the top right hand corner of your screen right now if you wanna check it out after this one. Now we come in with the isopropyl alcohol and give it a nice little clean. I done one of these recently and what I said in that was it's probably easier to exchange the solder for leaded solder. So we're gonna load up some more flux on the board. And what we're gonna do is tin up the pads with leaded solder. This will bring down the overall melting temperature of the solder, meaning we can put less heat on the chip and the board when we put the new chip on, which means there's also less of a risk of damaging that chip before we put it onto the board. I've never damaged a chip with too much heat personally, but I know it's coming one day. Put the fan back on. Now I take my soldering line, I put a little bit of solder on it, and I run over these pins. We'll get little bridges like that, but flux will help that situation. There we go. So 
So now the leaded is mixed with the unleaded. I'm just going to put a blob on here as well, just in the middle. And that is our board prepared and ready for action. Here we have our donor board. Again, we're gonna apply some flux and we're gonna set the temperature to 450 degrees Celsius at 99% speed airflow. It will take a little bit longer to get off, but again, less chance of damaging the chip. Just gotta be patient, wait for it to uh, the solder to wet like it has now, and slowly lift off. Bring back our main board. So you might be wondering, but Joey, how do you know what way to put the actual chip on when you put it onto this board? Well, as you can see on the chip that I'm holding now, on the bottom left, you've got a little dot, right? That dot, which is here, will correspond with the dot that's on the board. That is gonna be the orientation of this chip. So it's gonna go like this. So again, 450 degrees Celsius. Now we're going with an airflow speed of 50%, so the chip doesn't fly out of our hands when we put it on the board, which it shouldn't because solder should keep it in place anyway. But I'm still a new. I've got enough flux there. And hopefully we can just simply put this on. Wait for the solder to wet again. Heating around the board. Waiting for that blob in the middle to get liquefied. There we go, see it? Now I come in with the chip, slowly but surely. Drop it in place. Give it a bit of a push in the direction it needs to go. That looks about right. I take the heat off, I get some more flux. Put this on, flux is great. Now I simply put the hot air back on and let the chip reflow itself into position with surface tension. Wait for it, hopefully it works, otherwise I look like full now. Maybe it won't. Maybe the, uh, maybe the position is good enough already. It actually looks all right, there we go. There's a little pot there, you see that? Now I take the air off, wait for it to cool a sec. Now I come back in with the tweezers. Put the tweezers on, put the hot air, put pressure, downwards pressure on the chip. We're gonna see some squeezage in a second. There we go, look at all that solder coming out now from the sides. And now I come off. Wait for it to go solid, like that. Take the tweezers off. Then I take my soldering iron, and with the flux that's already on the board, hopefully, when I put my soldering iron on here, it should move the solder off, just like that. See that? However, it's not the cleanest job, so I'm just gonna get a little bit of flux. Just put it here and run my iron back and forth. There we go, better. Same for this little blob. You see how the, the solder is like spreading? It's not getting picked up by the iron. So you put a drop of flux, come back in with the iron. And there we go. I don't think we have any bridges. Yeah, there we go, nice. Clean the iron tip and do the same on this side. Squeeze that away. Just run it back and forth. That'll do. And we don't have any bridges up here, so I'm not gonna worry about that, or any solder blobs, should I say. Clean the iron off. Now I'm actually gonna come back in with 200 degrees Celsius just to melt the flux that we've got on the board to make it easy to clean with the cotton swab. Now we come in with the ice probe alcohol. Proper clean with the toothbrush. And finally, hot air station at 100 degrees, 99%, just to dry off the isopropyl alcohol from the board. Alcohol. And when it's like this, I feel like there's a little bit too much flux still on the board, so I go over it with the cotton swab. Gonna need some more IPA on this. The toothbrush didn't do a good a job as what I thought it would do. I actually think I need to swap out that toothbrush because it's very dirty now, very dirty. And this to me looks like an okay job. We're gonna inspect it under the microscope though and just check our work. Okay, quick inspection, let's have a look. Those sides look Nice, really nice, good. And what about these sides over here? Yeah, they look good. Nice, okay, good. Now the correct thing to do would have been to check all of this stuff that I'm about to show you before I change the chip. But I'm an idiot, and this is the Joey way. First off, you wanna make sure that all the pins on the HDMI port are good, just by giving them a little nudge, which they are fine. Second step is to put the meters in continuity mode, which is the mode that beeps when you put the probes together. And we're gonna test to make sure that we have continuity, so if I put one here and one here, we should get a beep, which we do. Fine, these little filters or diodes, I don't know what they are because I thought diodes had the, the lines on the end of them here and they look like diodes, but maybe they are filters. If someone could let me know in the comments, that would be real. Unless diodes are filters. Let's put it back together and give it a test. As you can see, I've got majority of the machine back together. I keep telling myself I can't keep putting things back in the case because one day it's gonna really backfire. I'm gonna have to take everything apart. As you can see, we've got most of the things back together. Without having the fan on, the CPU is just gonna overheat and it will turn off straight away. Let's see if we get anything on the screen. 
Let's go. Moment of truth. I've turned it on. It stays on. That's good. We get a fan spin. That's also good. Do we get an image on the screen? Come on. Let's go, man. Get here. That's what I'm talking about. The last thing to check is that it goes into 1080p. So I'm just doing that now. Looks good. Are we okay? We're fine, it stays on 1080p. That's what I'm talking about. I have some further testing to do with this Xbox One S, but if all goes well, I should be able to sell it for around about 90 pounds, which means I've doubled my money. Today, we make a profit. If you enjoyed this type of repair video, I guarantee you'll like this repair video, where I try to repair another Xbox One S. Thanks for watching. Peace.